you know, the Virginia governor's race. And for the past few months, there have been indications that aggressive po political theories have been tested by the public at large, especially in neighboring Virginia school board meetings where several regional counties have erupted uh, over critical race theory. And most recently, the content of books being available in the school, school libraries. Two books were pulled from the general uh, library system after a mother complained in Fairfax County. Now this week, the University of uh, Mary Washington issued results of a political uh, poll that showed Republican Glenn Youngkin as leading former Governor Terry McAuliffe for the very first time in its race. Uh, Lori, political movements, you know, they swing back and forth. What do you make of the Youngkin McAuliffe race at this point? Yeah, I think uh, Americans have something that few other people in other countries have, and it's that we have freedom in our souls. Uh, and in our guts. And we, no matter what party we are, we value freedom and we want to express our views. So when you see that uh, issues like CRT and mandates for vaccines, and you can just feel the wave uh, coming where the, that is harming our freedoms, you see uh, a turnaround. You see that uh, as we're being pushed down, people like Yunkin are rising up. People like Ron DeSantis are rising up and, um, and speaking for those of us who want to hear those voices. So uh, I think Ron Youngkin, Youngkin is riding on a high. Uh, he was just in a debate a couple days ago, which uh, he did very well after McAuliffe was saying that parents shouldn't have a voice in education. That was really interesting. Uh, so I think Youngkin is really, um, he stands a really good chance of sitting as a governor in Virginia. So, so, so Sam, the reason I, I introduced this topic is to talk about how the juxtaposition between Maryland and Virginia. And Youngkin has been described as the Virginia version of Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, which is a moderate Republican that has the ability to attract uh, a wide base, particularly among independents. So is it possible that uh, given Hogan's success and Youngkin's appeal so far, that another Republican will succeed Hogan in 2022 when the term ends? I think comparing Youngkin um, to Hogan is comparing apples and oranges. Larry Hogan's done a great job in the state of Maryland. He's definitely a moderate. He speaks for the residents of the city of, of Maryland and has done a really great job. In my opinion, the reason he won the governorship is because the Democrats came up with such a poor candidate and had a terrible campaign going on. I mean, the, the last governor nice. that we had goes back to uh, Elrich, um, Ehrlich, Ehrlich, and I just don't see those differences. I don't see a comparison between what Youngkin stands for and for you know, what the governor of Maryland stands for. And I want to remind people that Yunkin's support, his hardcore support, is 30%, the same support that Trump gets. I think that 70% of Republicans are fairly moderate and that they'll swing in the end uh, towards McCullough. Really? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting uh, in interesting prediction. Uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite a surprise. I wouldn't be surprised if, if McAuliffe wins. I don't think it'll be because of Republican support, however. Um, if anything, it'd be independent support that uh, remains, remains with him. The re again, the reason I, I brought it up is, you know, politics is about trends. And is uh, whether or not there's a moderating trend in the Republican Party that we're seeing and whether or not that trend is going to grow and in, 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 uh, not only in Virginia, but also in, in Maryland. I think that the trend of the Republican Party is finally, you know, after the, the, the past five years, moving positive towards what most Americans believe in, which includes individual rights. But we certainly don't want somebody up there that causes insurrection and, and rioting like we've seen in the past. I think that upset an awful lot of people in this country who believe in fair and honest elections, which we absolutely had. There's no history of fraud in the elections, and that will come into the, the, the primary in, in, or the election in Virginia. And I think that you'll get a fair election and you'll come up with a winner. And I think that those people will move to moderation. And Thank we'll you, talk. Sam. I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut you off there. We're being given the, uh, the sign that we've run out of time. 
I want to thank you uh, for uh, tuning in today, but I mean, we got to stay tuned for parting shots. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs>